Hey guys, back for another episode of Film Tutorials. Today we'll be going over color correction and how to get that cinematic look for your videos. To begin with, let's change the aspect ratio of our video. Um, you may see in many of the movies today, they are much wider than 16 by 9, which is what this uh, video is here. They are at the 2, 3, 5, 1 aspect ratio. And to achieve this film look, what we're what two, there's two ways to do it. You can add the crop effect to your footage. Basically, just drag this, this top one down here. I think about yeah, about 13% looks right. And the bottom one about 13%. And that's one way to do it to get more of that, you know, that wider aspect that you see in many of the movies today. Um, a way that I prefer to do it actually would be um, here, let's see, let's delete the crop effect. We're actually gonna create a new sequence. We're going to go 1080p 30, but before clicking that, we're going to go to settings. We're going to go up here, click custom. We're going to change it to 1920 by 817. What that does is gives you less, um, less vertical height, and it makes, uh, make those, makes those black bars for you when you export. So everything else should be fine. You're going to want to save this preset. Name it whatever you want, it's cinematic. And it'll show up in a customs folder down here. Cinematic. I'm gonna click that. And as you can see now we're working with two different sequences here. And you can see this one is normal, traditional, 16 by 9. And this one right here is 1920 by 817 pixels. So a little bit wider. And as we copy and paste our footage from sequence 1 to sequence 2 edit paste we see that you do not see the black bars but they are there you have to imagine that they are there you have to use your imagination that was stupid I'm going to this fucking <laughs> anyways yeah so the thing I like about doing it this way is that you can actually move your footage not like that but up and down until you lose until you go too far but you if in case you want to cut off a certain part of the shot you can really frame it better on the other one you don't have any room to move around but on this one see how his head's going to allow the frame i can i can frame that up right there make it look a lot better here's a little low something we can actually do is we can keyframe it down here to be like this keyframe the position and then once it gets up here we can keyframe the position to be there so It'll actually move along with his head, which is really cool. Same goes for this guy right here. Although I think this one we can just move up and keep that way. That looks pretty good. Right there, maybe a little, a little lower. All right. So that's how you get that widescreen aspect ratio look, and you will see it when we render it out. You'll see the black bars when we render it out later. So. Next thing to go over, color correction. Usually, the footage that comes out of your camera does not look like what you see in the movies. You get the, they go through a lot of color grading and color correction to really um, play around with the shot and get that cinematic look. Um, Adobe Premiere comes with a variety, if you go to video effects, comes with a variety of the color correction options that you can mess around with. However, a lot of them are just kind of stupid. But one that does work is Luma Curves. So go to the Luma Curves here, and a really basic color correction is just bringing that one up, bringing this guy down here. And as you can see, we've really given the footage more depth, give it more of like a dirty look, more of, more, it seems like it brings out a little bit more detail and just harshness to the shot. So you can see the comparison here. And that works for color correction very well. We can, we can copy the effect and paste it onto this guy right here and see how we get a similar effect there. Really just more dramatic, a little less soft, a little more harsh, especially on his face. And that's what we want. So another way you can do this is delete the Luma curve here. So you can type in Pro camp 
This one's actually not under color correction, it's under video effects adjust. Pull that on. You can lower the brightness and up the contrast. And that also gives that little, little harsher appearance, as well as you can lower the saturation a little bit to get, or, or hide the saturation and lower the saturation to get a certain look that you want. However, I still believe that there's a better way to do color correction in Premiere Pro, and that is to get a plugin called Magic Bullet Looks. Now, this does not come with Adobe Premiere Pro. You need to download the plugin. Um, basically, just look up on YouTube how to get Magic Bullet Looks for free, because you do have to pay for it, but there are, uh, again, other means of getting it. Um, so, and this is just, uh, it's made by Red Giant Software. It's another, uh, it's a color correction editing software within uh, these Adobe programs. As you can see, when I click edit, it opens up a whole another window here. And you have a lot of options here to go through just for color correction. So, once you get that installed, this is how I would color correct. Uh, I usually grab this film curve here, and you may say, whoa, stop, that looks stupid, but we're not even close to being done. Um, we mess around with these curves here, make it a little, little less dramatic, like more like more like that there. Um, let's see, yeah. All right, one thing I really like about this is that you can play around with the color ranges, and you can really, uh, really like try to communicate with your audience just through the visual style what what type of appearance you're trying to give. If you're trying to give it a warm appearance by, you know, dragging um, highlights and shadows um, to the, to the you know, reds and oranges, or if you're trying to really give it a, uh, like a James Bond look or something, you know, something scary, and, you know, dragging, dragging all your, uh, your tones down here. Um, but one thing I like to do is I usually like to go opposite. You know, I usually make the highlights a little warmer, shadows a little, a little bluer, Mid-tones also a little bluer because this shot it's a little bit looks a little bit like it's supposed to be like a depressing scene or something So you can see that before is a little bit warm after is a lot cooler On that shot You just don't want to add too much to make it look goofy or anything So it's a very subtle change, but a very important change at that um, Let's see what do we got here another thing that I like to add is we go to lens vignette and as you can see this brings a vignette around him darkens the edges we can adjust I usually like to make it bigger like that so again really subtle around the edges but helps focus our eyes on Colin's face which is the subject of the shot so as you can see when we're done here, we've gone from this to this. I think it looks a lot better. Another thing we can do again is grab that Pro Camp effect. And if you're really going for like a real depressive look, I usually lower the saturation a little bit, say to like let's go like 93 here. So it just brings a little bit of that, like those over over green saturated colors in the back, brings them down a little bit. So I think that's a real Real nice cinematic look here, as you as you can see the difference between these two shots right now. As you can see, I've added the effect to our second shot here, but Colin's face looks a little bit dark. So another thing we can do in Magic Bullet looks is under subject we can grab a spot fill and bring that kind of just like on his face there. And what you're gonna be able to do with this is up the fill. Just slightly, actually brightening up his face. So make sure that you're, you know, spreading off that. It's got a lot of. There we go. Fall off. So it's feathering it a little bit. When we look at that final shot right there, we can see that his face appears to be a little, a little lighter, which is what we want to get that appearance of a, a higher dynamic range. Move it over a little bit. That's what it seems. There we go. And that looks really nice. So, yeah. That's basically it for color correction.
let's show you guys again how to render this with the widescreen aspect ratio now. So you're going to do what we did last time, you know, your preset, but mine's already in here. Um, save it here, we'll call it wide screen test. And let's see here what we got. Let's go 1920 by 1080. Even though our project is 1920 by 817, you're going to want to render it by 1920 by 1080. That will bring in the black bars on top and bottom. You know, let's see, I've got our bitrate, 24, blah, blah, blah. And render. And as it's encoding, I'm going to open up file location of where it will be. Let's see here. And it is taking a quite a bit longer to render this time just because of all that color correction that we've added to the footage. So I'll be right back when it's done. All right, our render has finished up here. Minimize out of this. Oh no, my computer's running hot. Anyways, we go to the widescreen test right here, and as you can see, we have those cinematic black bars, and the shot looks really good in the end. Yeah, guys, hope you learned a little bit more about how to get the cinematic look with your videos. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comments below, and be looking out for more tutorials coming soon. Bye.